Hello, and welcome to the first in what will become a series of videos on um, some technologies that teachers can use to enhance their interaction with students and uh, learning in general. I think educational technologies basically fall into two categories. Uh, one is uh, technologies that will make it easier to do the things that you're already doing. Uh, save you time, save you effort, something along those lines. The other is technologies that allow you to completely transform what it is you're doing with students. And so through these videos, we'll look at uh, a combination of those two. Now, I think probably the first thing that I do with my students to allow me to use these other technologies is to get some basic information from them. Uh, I have my students sign up for a Google Plus community. I have um, uh, some sharing of Google Drive files with them. Um, I do a fair amount uh, with my students where I just have to have an email address or you know maybe you would want a Twitter handle or uh, you know, a Flickr uh, username, something along those lines. Uh, so I think a good place to start for educational technology is just how do we get that information from our students in the fastest and easiest way possible. Now you can have a student write down their email address, but then you have to go through it and try and decipher handwriting and, and type that in, and it takes some time. Um, so rather than doing like note cards at the beginning of the year, I have my students fill out an online survey using Google Forms. So if you don't have a Google account already, sign up for a Google account, first step. Next step, you'll see right now, I'm, I'm just in my, my email right now. Um, you can access Google Forms, it's part of Google Drive. So you just go up here to the little boxes, um, that, that gets you to all your different options for, uh, uh, for Google products, and then into Drive, and it'll bring up a new tab or a new window. And then I wanna create a new form. And on this form, uh, uh, whoops, that's not what I wanted. There we go. Uh, on this form, I like to give it a title, just student information. And there are a few things that I want to get from my students. Uh, so first thing is your name. And I, I put in here, um, as you'd like to be called. So I'm Andrew. I used to go by Andy, so I would put in Andy here. Um, good way to, uh, uh, to get that information from you, uh, your students as well. As you'd like uh, to be called. And then for question type here, uh, it's not going to be a multiple choice question, of course. This one, uh, text would be a good selection for this one. So they get a little text box, they can type in their name. Uh, if you like having things formatted by last name, you could ask them um, in the, the help text to do last name and then comma first name. And that's generally a pretty useful thing to do here. Uh, and then make this a required question so everybody who fills this out has to put in their name. And then done. Next up, I'm going to add an item and I want another text one. I'm going to ask for an email address. Now, I ask my students to create a Gmail account if they don't already have one. Um, so this is actually uh, one place where I do that. And so I would just type in here something like this. If this isn't a Gmail address, please get one soon and let me know your new address. Uh, there's quite a few Google products that I use, and I, I think it's a good idea um, to have students, if not using a Gmail address, um, you can use other email addresses and have them set up for um, things like Google Drive. So make sure that they've signed up through Google for uh, some of these different products. Probably just as simple, though, to have them create a new address if they don't have one already. And then again, required question and done. You can add things here. Uh, I like to put on like food allergies or, or other health alerts. Um, phone number, uh, if, if you don't have that from students, is a good thing to include here. Uh, seating preferences, uh, whatever you would normally put on your note card at the beginning of the year, you can put into this form. Uh, so now what I like to do with these is go to, uh, um, I, I embed this into another website. Um, so there's a couple of ways that you can do that. I think it's just easiest to uh, go to the view live form. And then this web address up here, you can share that with your students on your class website. Um, you could uh, make a tiny URL for this and make it easy to, uh, um, to find that way. Um, however you find it, get your students onto this form. 
Uh, this works pretty well with mobile devices, so you can have them do this in class on their cell phones on that first day, and that works just great. And then last name, first name, Bennett, Andrew, even at one at lockeyschools.org and submit. Okay, now from the teacher end of things, I'm going to go back to my Google Drive folder and uh, go back to my drive here. And then I have student information, um, was my, my form that was already open. Um, for responses, we need to fig uh, display here or decide here where it's going to store those responses. So if you already have a spreadsheet, it can store it there. Uh, if you go to choose response destination, I'm just going to make a new spreadsheet for this. Student information responses is the default. And so I'll go ahead and create that. Now I can close out of this and refresh my window here. And I have student information and... When I go to view responses, it brings up the new, uh, uh, the new spreadsheet. And so this will have a list of names and email addresses for each of your students, which makes it pretty easy to enroll them in some of the other services we use. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this useful, I'd encourage you to subscribe to the blog where you can see all the new posts, all the new videos that I'll be putting up. Uh, also, if you have thoughts on this video or other videos about uh, other technologies you'd like to see, please leave those in the comments. Thanks again.